Welcome to our first phase assembly, the intermediate phase for year 9 and 10. The theme of our assembly is the awareness of equality and diversity, with a focus on the LGBTQ community. If you have a look at the screen, there are some celebrities there. So what do these celebrities have in common? Well, they are all members of the LGBTQ community. So what does that mean? What is the LGBTQ community? Well, it stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans. The Q in LGBTQ represents the identity questioning. Anybody can question their gender or sexual identity and have the freedom to do so. It's really important that we remember that. So first and foremost, we all have an identity, but it can differ from person to person. We don't all experience attraction in the same ways, so it is very personal to every individual person. But remember, you should never feel pressured to label your identity. It is okay to question. Everybody has that right. There are many different ways that people can identify. And some people may not prefer to have a label. People may choose to tell how they identify to others, but some maybe, maybe don't, and they prefer not to. It is important that we are respectful of this. Some people have more confidence and feel comfortable enough to share their identity. And that needs to be encouraged, but some people don't. So this month, the month of June, is Pride Month. It's about sending a message to be proud of who you are. And this takes place across the world. It promotes equality and diversity, and it helps to educate people on sexual and gender identities. I'm now going to show you a short video so that you capture the atmosphere of Pride London. So Pride Month came about following an event that took place in America at the Stonewall Inn in Manhattan. And from that, the Stonewall Support Agency was formed. But there are many examples of how you can support and celebrate people's identity. I want you to take a moment to think about your tutor group, your year group, phase, and the, and the academy as a whole. We are all a team, we are a community. Wouldn't it be boring if we were all the same? But working together with everyone, it demonstrates our tolerance. It allows everyone to have their own identity. And it encourages equality and diversity. And that's what we want. That's we, what we want within our community. An example of how we can all come together is the story of Gareth Thomas, the captain of the Welsh rugby team. Let's look at his story. The sport we play, rugby, represents us on a huge scale. So to do it and to be living a lie, I suppose became really confusing. Three million people of a nation all wanting to be captain of Wales, all wanting to be me, yet me wanting to be any one of them three million people. In the middle of a field, in a big game, or the heat of the battle, it is vicious. A broken nose or a broken finger, it's just a, a scrape. 
All you can kind of hear is the noise of people being winded, of bones being broken, amongst this 30 crazy people vying for a rugby ball. The battle I was going through personally, compared to the battles on the field, were probably 10 times worse. I was physically strong, yet mentally so weak and so afraid. I wanted to be totally open and honest with everybody, yet I didn't want something so minor as my sexuality to define who I was. To hide that secret from the team was horrible. That team becomes like your family, the closest thing to you. If the crowd and the fans and the people of Wales ever found out, then I always worried about everybody would turn their back on me and they gave me something so positive, yet I couldn't give them something so simple as honesty. I got to a point where I couldn't sleep, I couldn't blink. I had this fear of the dark all of a sudden, so I needed at some point to find the strength to be able to tell the truth to people. And it was the moment when I played the one and only game I felt where I never was able to try. I've lost everything else in my life, and now the one thing I've done is I've lost myself within this team. And when I finished that game, I remember just being unable to stop crying. I think it was like a sign of desperation. Coach had come along and spoke to me. He went to look me in the eye, and when he asked me what the matter was, I managed to think to myself, is that the door has been opened and there's the slightest bit of light coming through. Now I either close that door or I boot it open as hard as I can and I just take the consequences of what's going to be on the other side. And I told him. I didn't have to say I'm gay, it wasn't all about that. He knew. He said to me, you can't go through this alone and these people love you. I just felt this overwhelming protection from everybody. In my mind, I'd built rugby as something that was so against everything I was that their reaction of just tapping me on the shoulder and kind of just saying, let's have a beer and get on with it, was almost in a way I was like, is that it? Is, is, seriously, is that all you got to say? You didn't even want to chat? And they're like, it doesn't matter. We want the Gareth Thomas back. We want the rugby player, the guy to lead us. That's what's more important to us. I know I've come through the hardest and toughest of times. There's absolutely nothing that could ever defeat me. Anything else that comes my way in life, if I can't handle it myself, then I can just go back to my teammates and they can help me get through it. I've done something that not many people can do, and that's as a child have a dream and grow up to be able to achieve it. And I'm very proud about my rugby playing career, but more proud of the fact that Wales supported me to play rugby, being Gareth Thomas, being the person that I am 100%. So Gareth's greatest fear wasn't the opposition on the pitch. It was the fear of rejection from the game he loved. It was the fear of rejection from the people he loved. But he didn't have to worry about it because they accepted Gareth for who he was. They accepted his identity and they accepted him as a person, the fantastic rugby player and the fantastic captain that he was. So that's what we want for our academy. We want our academy to be inclusive of all identities. We will not tolerate bullying or discriminatory language. Nobody has the right to be like that to anybody. For LGBTQ Pride Month, we want to be a visible ally to all identities because we want to promote equality and diversity and continue to do so. So one of the ways in which we do do that is that Mrs Hughes runs an equality club every week at the academy. And last year, Mr Zweistra, Mrs Hughes and Mr Evans went to the South End Pride March and there they are holding up their banner. So being an ally means that we will be supportive, but we will be visible when we support those with a different identity to ourselves. So think about how we can do this. How can we accept difference? How can we be supportive of those who may be struggling with their identity and, and maybe feeling isolated? So how do we speak out? How do we challenge unkindness or derogatory remarks? 
And how do we challenge and ensure that those students do not feel isolated? Think about how we can do that within the, within the academy. Can you think of allies within the academy? Your teachers, your friends, people that you can go to to get support. Are there any celebrity allies that you can think of? I'm going to share some with you now. I'm sure that everybody knows every celebrity on that slide. Will they actively speak out and support equality and diversity and the acceptance of all identities? And they will continue to do so. So this month is a time for celebrating diversity, equality and identity. But remember, it shouldn't just be about this month. It shouldn't just be about June. It should be recognised and celebrated every day. Because as human beings, we have the right to be what we want to be and who we want to be. And I want to leave you with a quote from Nelson Mandela, who said, to deny people their human rights is to challenge their very humanity. Thank you.